On a previous episode of Mellow Labs, I said, By the way, 50 likes and I make a real working set of Lego walkie talkies. And you guys either really liked the idea or it was just a very good video. Either way, the like button got completely demolished, so I had no choice but to actually make it. And on today's episode, I'll show you how and how you can make one yourself. My journey started by looking for a 3D model of a Lego walkie talkie and I checked all of the usual places, GrabCAD, Thingiverse, printables, even Maker World, and I couldn't find anything that met my incredibly high criteria. Those being, it's a 3D model of a Lego walkie talkie that's accurate to the original and a file that I can edit inside of Fusion No Longer 360. And I couldn't really find any models that were accurate and editable. Loads of accurate models, but STLs that I can't really edit. Well, I can, but it's a hassle. So I settled for this model from Thingiverse, which was close enough for me to begin working because the first thing I wanted to figure out was scale. The scale of walkie talkies in the Lego universe is quite comical. I think they end up being like four foot tall, which is way larger than I want to print a Lego walkie talkie. Well, I wouldn't mind, but Polymaker hasn't gotten back to me with my last filament request and I don't want to spend that much on filament. So uh, Polymaker, please call me back. I miss you. So instead, I scaled it to the size of an adult male hand, specifically this hand. And I did that by grabbing a ruler, marking the size of my hand, converting that into millimeters using my calipers, and then putting that measurement into Fusion as a line, and then stretching the entire walkie-talkie so that the line fits inside the middle bit between the handle. And then I traced all of the dimensions of that onto a piece of paper, and then I cut it out so that I could see what it would actually feel like to hold in my hand. And honestly, it felt really good. Except it was ever so slightly too big to actually fit onto my printer bed. So I scaled it down ever so slightly. For some reason, even though I scaled it to my hand, it was slightly oversized anyway. So I scaled it down ever so slightly. And now that I had the scale of the walkie talkie I wanted, I modeled the entire thing from scratch. Mostly. I modeled everything except for this handle because the geometry of this handle is way more complicated than this little brain can comprehend. So instead, I grabbed an STL with an accurate handle, brought it into Fusion, converted it from a mesh to a body, deleted all the stuff I didn't need, deleted a whole bunch of faces because you have to do that manually if you don't pay for Fusion, and then I scaled it and made it fit my handset, which means if you want the handle, you can get that over on Printables. I made it as a remix to the original, but the rest of the walkie-talkie you can pick up over on Patreon. You can either join the £5 tier or you can buy the files outright. Dealer's choice. And now we need to talk about the electronics because I need to know what I'm putting inside of the walkie-talkie so that I can model all of the uh, supports and structures to hold said electronics. And I looked around for a while for a good DIY walkie-talkie and there's a few of them. Some of them are very good. This one notably from Electro Noob, very good, highly recommend the video. But I don't quite like the range and the quality and most importantly the price you have to pay to make a DIY walkie-talkie. I think it ends up being like £26 for or both walkie-talkies, which isn't bad, but I can go on eBay, look up walkie-talkie toy, and find this pair for £17 with a thousand feet of range and the rechargeable battery. So I know it's kind of not the way of the channel to not go the DIY route, but I ordered these ones. When they eventually arrived, I tested them, they worked pretty well. I accidentally gave one of them a lick. Don't lick cheap Chinese electronics, it's probably bad for you. And then after that, I disassembled them. And shockingly enough, on the inside, I found a PCB, which reminded me, this walkie-talkie wrench test is brought to you by JLC PCB. They make high quality PCBs and assembly services that are quick, reliable, and affordable. Let's see how far these can go. Hello, 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 hello. One, two, three, four, 66, 67. Right, this should be 200 feet. JLC PCB makes it super easy to order your own circuit boards. Simply upload your Gerber files and get an instant quote. 69, 70, 133. This should be 400 feet. JLC PCB keeps prices low thanks to massive in-house production. Their one to eight layer PCBs start from just $2. 609, 
700. JLC PCB runs five state-of-the-art factories with full in-house testing so your boards always meet your specifications and if you need boards ASAP JLC can turn around PCBs in as little as 24 hours. I am now at 1000 feet. If you want to make electronic projects from prototyping to full assembly visit JLC PCB with my link in the description. They're my go-to for PCBs because they're easy, reliable and affordable. I'm kind of surprised that these are still working so I'm gonna walk a tiny bit further. I'm apparently at 1300 feet according to Google so sign up to JLC PCB with my link in the description and get $70 in coupons as well as £30 off six layer PCBs. Visit JLC PCB. I'm going home, I'm very cold, I want a cup of tea. The next problem I needed to solve were the inputs. If we look on the PCB, we have an on and off switch and a push to talk button. And obviously I wanted those to be handled by either of the ones that were modeled on the walkie talkie. So I wanted the big bottom one to be push to talk and one of these knobbies to be on and off. First of all, I looked online to see if I could find any rotary switches or big push buttons that would work for this, but I couldn't find anything that was the right size or for the right price. So instead, I kind of set myself the challenge to make my own ones by using 12 by 12 buttons. So for the big switch, I'm using a 12 by 12 button behind it, but I didn't just want a tiny button behind the big push button because the click didn't feel satisfying. So I wanted something with a little more travel distance. So the way I did that is I actually modeled an entire spring that sits behind the button that pushes it out. So you have to push quite a fair, quite a fair bit in to actually push the button. And that was actually like my second iteration and in some testing, it worked perfectly. So I was very happy with that. And then I moved on to the knob. Now the knob, again, I'm using a 12 by 12 button just because I can, but I wanted it to be a rotary on and off switch. So the way I did that is I mounted the switch behind a knob, which had a little ramp on it that would slide into position, pressing the button closed. And that, again, on my second try, I think, or maybe even my first, I don't actually remember, it happened so quickly, it, that actually worked really well. So that's kind of what I went with. So I put all the electronics and everything into the uh, 3D model and then started printing it out. Since we now have about 32 hours of printing ahead of us for both of the walkie talkies, we can kill some time by preparing the electronics. Fortunately, we're using an off-the-shelf walkie-talkie, so we don't have to do a lot of it. We just have to extend the reach of some of the components, specifically the on and off switch, the push to talk button, the indicator LED, the microphone, and the speaker. So that's basically all the components. Uh, specifically, the microphone and the LED are gonna be a little bit annoying because you're going to need a hot air station because they're SMT components. You can get away with getting the LED with a regular soldering iron, but for the microphone, you're probably going to need a hot air station. And now we have to solder on some wire to the pads that we removed components from. I'm using some 30 gauge silicon wire because it's thin and flexible, perfect for something like this. But you can use whatever wire you have laying around as long as it doesn't bridge the pads and it's small enough to solder onto the components. And now it's time to solder back on the components to the ends of the wires. I started off with the microphone because it's the smallest and fiddliest part. So take your time with it. It's not worth breaking the microphone. I then did the LED, which I'm using a slightly different LED than the one I removed from the board because this one fits through the holes on the walkie-talkie so that I can poke it out and see whether it's on or off. I then did the uh, on and off switch and the push button which I'm replacing with the same 12 by 12 millimeter button and obviously the speaker. So now that that's all done we can just give it a quick little test to make sure that it works and we can start doing the same thing with the other walkie-talkie. Eventually all of the parts for the first walkie-talkie finished printing but I don't want to talk too much about the first one because I made so many little mistakes that I needed to go and fix for the second version that if you're interested in seeing all of my blunders there's a video over on Patreon that, that shows you all of them. Uh, check it out, have fun, laugh at me, I encourage it. But um, instead I'm just going to proceed with the second one. Let me begin by just clarifying my print settings. I've got three walls and 15% infill, mostly because I want it to be a little more rugged so that when I bring it down to events, it can survive some light tossage without falling apart. And I had to print everything with supports and brims. My printer has a bad tendency of warping large parts, so the brims helped a lot. 
but it does mean we have to spend about half an hour removing all of the brims and supports and sanding things down because if you don't, these are gonna be very sharp, especially the corners. Just make sure you buff down the corners before you hand this to a child. They will impale themselves. I did it and I'm an adult. Now that we're finally done with all of the preparations, we can begin the assembly and we're gonna start off by grabbing the main body of the walkie-talkie and putting in 14 threaded M3 inserts and they go here, 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 and here. Next, we can assemble the handle and by assemble, I mean glue the two halves together and you wanna use super glue for this, but not as much super glue as I used. I used way too much and I ended up stinging the crap out of my eyes with the amount of super glue I used and it came out of the seam so I actually needed to sand that down. So use a little bit, but not enough to cause yourself bodily harm. And then you can just make sure that the handle is nice and aligned so that not like, weird and skewed and then set it aside. And whilst we're waiting for those to dry, we can move on to the antenna and the antenna holder. And we just wanna make sure that the antenna holder can smoothly go into the antenna. So just try putting it in. If it doesn't fit, give it a little bit of a sand. You wanna just have a nice smooth fit so that the antenna can be replaceable just in case it breaks in the future. This I imagine this being quite the weak point. And uh, I'm using some uh, 16 by 2.6 millimeter magnets uh, to actually hold it together so you want to put one in the top of the antenna holder and then you want to put another magnet on top of that and then push the antenna holder into the antenna which should force the magnets to go into the cutouts that I've made for them and hopefully you should have an antenna that attaches to the antenna holder with some magnets. At this point, we wanna attach the ear caps because there's a later on step that actually uh, covers up one of the screws. So I attach these through the walkie talkie into the threaded heat inserts with some M3 screws. And I did two per ear cap and I thought it was gonna be loose, but no, it actually seems really good. By this point, the handle should be completely dry so we can force it into the body. Now, I probably could have found a better way of mounting it, uh, but I'm not a good designer, so I didn't. It just kind of fits into the holes that I've designed for it. If it's very rough, you can sand it a little bit, but for me, it just took quite a bit of pressure and forced itself in there, but whilst it's in there, it stays in good. And uh, just for an extra measure, I did use some super glue around the inside of the walkie talkie so that it just really stays in there. I am not planning to disassemble this at any point in the future. These are very permanent. And at this point, we should be able to attach the antenna holder. So you wanna grab the antenna holder and uh, you've probably guessed it, it attaches with super glue. So put some of it around the uh, top of the ring and then put that through the hole for the antenna holder on the inside of the walkie talkie. Let it dry for a little bit and then you can just uh, pop your antenna on, just like that. Now we're getting into the fun and fiddly parts of the project. Let's start with the button. You wanna put the button into the slot at an angle because the two prongs that come out the bottom kind of are in the way, but with a little bit of pressure, the button just pops into place. And then we can move on to the knobs. The knobs are pretty easy. They just go in through the side of the body and just make sure the shafts go through. Uh, if they if they're a little rough to turn, just give the holes a little bit of a sanding, just to make sure that it's nice and smooth. And then on the back of the knobs to the shafts, we wanna attach the little rotary things that will press the button. And uh, yeah, they attach with super glue. I know, I'm not a good designer. Uh, just don't use too much super glue or you'll just glue the whole thing to the body. Um, they both mount exactly the same way, but only the bottom one is the one that actually turns the walkie on and off. Uh, the top one, it just is there for aesthetics. Now we can get started on attaching the electronics. So grab the walkie talkie PCB and you wanna align the USB with the cutout that I made for the USB port. And that should align the holes on the PCB with the two threaded heat inserts we put in earlier. And you wanna just tighten those down with some M3 screws and that should make the PCB not move at all. Uh, in hindsight, I probably could have put the USB port in a better place because currently it's coming out from uh, behind the handle, which is a little bit annoying to get in with a like a thicker USB cable to charge it, but it does work. It's just a little bit fiddly. Uh, for the battery, I kept the original adhesive that was on it and I've just kind of used that to stack down anywhere where it wasn't in the way and that seems to be doing a fine job, so I recommend it. 
At this point, we can actually install the on and off button. So make sure you grab the on and off button. Otherwise, you're going to be holding this button down to turn the walkie talkie on and off and uh, turning this for push to talk. So grab the correct button and you're going to want to glue that button onto the little carriage with just a tiny amount of super glue. You don't need a lot. And then we need to kind of calibrate it. So put the on and off um, knob in the on position, which will be the position where the knob pushes against the button to press it in. And you wanna make sure that the little carriage goes all the way in so that the button is pressed in and then screw it down and then just test it to make sure that um, it actually turns on and off when you twist the knob. So just move the carriage back and forth if, it's, uh, if it needs a little adjustment. But that should be it. And then we can move on to the actual push to talk button. And again, grab the button and it attaches with a little bit of super glue to the uh, inside of the spring. And then you can put the two prongs either side of the spring and that just kind of hangs in to the uh, holes on in the walkie talkie behind the button. And uh, it's gonna be a little bit wobbly for now until we put the back on because that actually uh, secures the button properly in place. And we're finally on the final stretch. So I'm gonna grab my speaker and glue it on behind the top ear cup with just a tiny amount of super glue. And I'm gonna take the LED, poke it in through one of the holes in the ear cup. And again, just secure it with a tiny amount of super glue. And then we're gonna take the microphone and again, secure it with a tiny amount of super glue just enough to hold it in place and not enough to get any on like the front of the microphone because at that point you're gonna have audio quality issues. Don't ask me how I know. But that should be all of the gluing and screwing. Well, not exactly because we still need to screw the back cover on, but this is a great time to just run a couple tests and make sure that your buttons and switches work reliably. Make sure that you're sending receiving audio clearly and that the little LED actually comes on when you turn on the walkie talkie. And if you're satisfied, uh, just put the back on. And the only thing to look out for here is to make sure that the two prongs that come out of the button spring actually go into the back of the cover that holds the button spring securely in place. And then we can just screw all the screws in. And that should be it. You should have a working Lego walkie talkie. Uh, now you just have to wait for the other one to finish printing and do all the steps again. And there you have it a giant functioning pair of Lego walkie talkies, just like I promised. So with that, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, support me on Patreon if you can, and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye. My shoes are gonna have to go in the wash. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. No, I dropped the walkie talkie. I've only gone and bloody dropped it on my way back. The antenna's all broken off now. <laughs>